There are a lot of movies made about historical moments, historical places, historical people, but there's a few movies that are about history itself. It's much rarer that a film actually looks at the idea of history. Of course, portraying ideas is far more abstract and ambitious than capturing a specific moment in history, but some movies do tackle big ideas and they occasionally pull them off. So, as a lover of film who has always studied history, here are my own five personal favorite films which are about history itself. Number five, Babel. Now, before I go into Babel, I just want to bring something else up for a sec. One of my favorite book series is the Deptford Trilogy by Robertson Davies. The books follow the lives of three men who are linked to each other by a single action carried out in their childhood. That single action shapes their lives forever in ways that they can barely imagine. Now, the reason I bring up the Deptford Trilogy is because Babel tries to capture that same idea of consequences. We see small actions across three continents causing ripple effects that irreversibly change lives forever, and not always for the better. It's on an individual level, but this same principle could be applied to human history as a whole. For what is history but accounts of people taking actions which affected others? Babel doesn't try to summarize the human condition, but it does provide a glimpse into just how much influence we can have over other people's lives with trivial actions that we could completely forget about. And we sometimes forget about them at our own peril. Number four, JFK. I can just imagine people grinding their teeth in frustration over me putting JFK on a list about movies about history. But I would like to make it clear, I don't put JFK on here because of its historical accuracy. I don't know how historically accurate JFK is. I don't think I'll ever know how historically accurate JFK is. But what I do know is that JFK does a fantastic job portraying how history can be changed. First of all, there's the murder of John Kennedy. That moment was indeed one of the most terrible moments in the history of the United States. It changed history forever in a way that we'll never truly understand because we'll never know what would have happened if Kennedy didn't get killed. Maybe he would have continued the war in Vietnam, maybe not. But history was set in stone when Kennedy was assassinated on the 22nd of November, 1963. The film also delves into that aspect of history which is crucial, yet incredibly frustrating. Speculation. People tend to forget that the characters in JFK never fail to point out that they are speculating. And you can't just take their word for it. It's even in the dialogue. The same is true in large parts of human history. Historians' words could be taken at face value, or eyewitnesses' accounts could be taken at face value. Later evidence, however, might cause us to doubt their reliability. History is not just written by the victors. History is written by humans. And humans are fallible. Oliver Stone never intended us to take JFK at face value, just like he didn't want us to take the Warren Commission at face value. He wanted us to open our minds and speculate and ultimately do our own work, our own thinking, our own research. Obviously, doing your own research and your own thinking sometimes leads people down some really freaky rabbit holes, but as I said, humans are fallible. Number three, Gangs of New York. At first glance, Gangs of New York seems to just focus on a particular time period which isn't usually talked about. And in that sense, it succeeds very well. But what puts Gangs of New York on this list is the fact that the whole movie becomes a build-up to a punchline at the end which lands like a kick to the gut. I should say, this part will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen Gangs of New York, you should skip to number two. While Gangs of New York is mostly focused on the situation involving the main characters, there's a minor focus on the fact that New York City, during the Civil War, 
was a powder keg waiting to explode. The anger and resentments burned brighter and faster until the explosion rocked the city in a riot which rendered any individual conflicts completely pointless. Even the A-plot in the movie is completely overturned by the draft riots, just like Martin Scorsese intended. But the punchline on top of all that is the fact that even after this riot takes a week to be stopped and the dead are piled into their graves, the main character points out that the future of New York will be as though he and none of his contemporaries ever existed. And then, in one of the most powerful endings to a movie that I've ever seen, we see a montage of New York growing and expanding over the decades as the graves of friends and enemies crumble into dust and are forgotten. It shows one of the cruelest aspects of time in relation to individual lives versus the bigger picture. It never fails to put a tear in my eye. Number two, Land of the Blind. This movie is a wonder to me. A wonder because it seems to come from a man who has not done anything to match its quality before or since. Land of the Blind follows an Orwellian-like story of a man working in a prison in a fictional colonial country run by a European monarchy with a reputation for torture and tyranny. Joe befriends revolutionary John Thorne in prison and becomes involved in the revolution which takes their country out of the frying pan into the fire. All throughout the movie, there are references to all the worst abuses of power in modern world history. Idi Amin, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, Ferdinand Marcos, Augusto Pinochet, all of them referenced and even named in this film. As one extreme is replaced by another, it isn't just a sign that history repeats itself, but also a sign that if history is forgotten or erased, no lesson is ever learned. The ruling class constantly does what it can to push its propaganda on the people, ensuring that the other side of things is demonized. Joe himself sets out to write an account of his involvement in the power struggle, but he himself is biased. And the film delves into that bias in ways that I won't reveal. I'll simply say that by the end of the film, you're just left haunted, disillusioned, and fully appreciative of the power of remembering or forgetting history. But even with all that, there is one film which surpasses Land of the Blind, and that film is Ararat. Yes, this film once again makes one of my lists. Ararat takes an event in world history, examines the little facts that we have about that event, and it views the disputes made about those facts, and then portrays how a film adaptation deals with the facts, and then provides human error on top of all that. It's one of the most ambitious stories that I've ever come across in a film. Five different plot lines going on at the same time while being linked in surprising ways. Within this film, we've got a movie adaptation of the Armenian Genocide, we've got historical portrayals of the genocide, we have the testimonies of eyewitnesses whose claims are disputed, while the film's characters all have to deal with how the past still controls their present. Just like in Gangs of New York, individual issues clash with bigger movements. Just like in JFK, people deny the truth, or people speculate on the truth, and try to do their own justifications for how history played out. Just like in Land of the Blind, the dangers of erasing history are examined. Ararat shows that the study of history sometimes boils down to an examination of stories, passed down through generations, providing meaning to people's lives and deciding their fate. The power of Ararat is its unflinching look at these people who are struggling to make sense of their pasts, and thus, human history. And ultimately, Ararat goes beyond any one event, any one group of people, and gazes into the abyss that is humanity and its relationship with its own past.